I'm chatting to Pavel Maliski, who is the ACT candidate for Napier. Kia ora, Pavel, and thanks for joining us. Good morning, Andrew. Thank you very much for having me here. No, it's all good. And uh, Pavel, um, you're originally from Poland, and you're a structural engineer as well, yes. by training and if by experience. Um, what made you decide to stand for ACT in Napier? Well, uh, yes, I'm originally from Poland. I left Poland uh, 20 years ago moved to New Zealand about 13 years ago. I've been living in the UK and in Ireland briefly okay. all the time. Uh, when I came to this country, I saw this place as a land of opportunity. I saw this place as a place where I can safely uh, bring up my family, where the cost of living is reasonable. People who are prepared to work are able to get ahead. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I saw the society as an open society that's going to welcome us as foreigners. Yeah. Over the last couple of years, I saw those things uh, slightly deteriorating, yeah. uh, which is why uh, I decided to join the politics. I think I act policies are what New Zealand needs at the moment to correct the course and uh, become again this land of opportunity for everybody yeah. who wants to live here. Because yeah. in, in the blurb about you on the ACT Facebook, uh, uh, ACT website, should I say, uh, you say that, um, that you see familiar pictures of life here from when you were in Poland, communist Poland. Um, isn't that stretching it a little bit too far? I don't think um, you can really compare what, because you're blaming the Labour government for that. Uh, what made you come to that sort of um, uh, conclusion? No, I think uh, <clears throat> uh, it says that it's not a direct comparison. Yeah, it's not quite yeah. there yet. But they are familiar but, things. Uh, is it? Yes, you can see you can see the seeds of the same thing. Yeah, like centrally governed, central uh, government that holds power uh, centrally. Yeah. Centralization, yeah. Uh, development of administration, approach that the government knows better than the people. Yeah. Uh, all those things I remember being present, I remember being at the very core. Of course what is happening in New Zealand is not directly comparable yeah. to yeah. what was happening in Poland, I'm not yes. saying that. Yes, sure. But I do think that the ideology has certain things in common, yeah. and once the ideology is there, things tend to go in the wrong direction. Yeah. Uh, and we're pretty far away from that stage, but uh, I think it's you know, the earlier you can correct the course, the better. Yeah, yeah. Now, are you number 35 on the ACT Party list? I am. Yeah, so it's pretty unlikely you're going to make it into Parliament, unless ACT does very, <laughs> very well, but based on the polls, I think. Um, so, and also, um, do you actually want to win the seat, and do you see you have a chance of winning it? Because obviously polls show that it will be either Labour or, or National who, who win the local Napier seat. Um, so w w why are you standing? Uh, no, being realistic about it, ACT is not seriously contesting the seat. Yeah. Uh, I'm just here to fly the flag for okay. the party and to inform people about the policies. Yeah. And uh, hopefully I can get some more party votes uh, yeah. for, uh, for ACT. Okay. So we are being realistic about this okay. and uh, the voters are welcome to vote strategically so to speak. Yeah. We are asking them for party votes. Okay. This is what will allow to make a new, a real change in New Zealand. Yeah. So who should they vote for? Who do you think, if they don't vote for you in the electorate vote, and they give you your part, the party vote, who should they vote for in the electorate? Well, I'm not here to tell them who they should work for, yeah. vote for. Yeah. <clears throat> but obviously, uh, acts, policies are more aligned with national policies yeah. than any other parties. Yes. And, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, why, why is the party voting act? I, I don't think national policies go far enough. Yeah. So I think the best way forward is to party vote act yeah. for real change. Yeah. Uh, and vote strategically for the candidate that is closest to act and has real chances of getting yeah. through. Okay, no, that's good. And now what is your campaign strategy for the election. Are you door knocking? Do you have hoardings up? What, what are you doing? Uh, we have a great group of volunteers here in Hopes yeah. Bay who are helping us with the hoardings. Yeah. Uh, just the other day I had a phone call from the homeowner who 
wanted the <coughs> act uh, holding put on on their fans. Okay. Uh, that holding was there within half an hour. Okay. So that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, myself, I'm getting engaged in public meetings. Uh, not further than this Friday, we're having a meeting about the floods yeah. uh, in Hawkes Bay that happens in Eskdale. I happen to live in Eskdale. Yeah. Uh, of course, I will be there. Uh, David Seymour is also coming to he this is. meeting. Yeah, yeah. And after that, there's a busy calendar of other meetings yeah. that okay. will be going ahead. Well, so generally, talking to people, um, engaging with uh, the community, yeah. and there's plenty of opportunity for okay. that. Well, we'll get to the issue of the cyclone Gabriel and the recovery and that, but just back on to the um, uh, hoardings or the billboards and that. Um, oh, has ACT been breaking the rules, the local rules, with putting signs up and that? And what mm. has the council contacted you, or have you have, have you spoken to the council about the rules for putting billboards up? No, not not that I'm aware of. We yeah. are aware of those rules, yeah. and uh, I, I I have no knowledge of anybody breaking those rules. Okay, all right. Now. Um, elections cost quite a bit. How are you fa funding your campaign? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> acting is uh, act is funded from donations of the members. Okay. And uh, all the donations go through the through the central office. Okay. Obviously, and uh, I'm volunteering, so I'm funding my campaign. I'm a small business owner. I yeah. work for myself. Yeah. Which means that I have some flexibility in dedicating the time and yeah. and resources. Yeah. So. Uh, that's that's what I'm doing. Okay. Now, what are the main issues you're standing on? Uh, it has to be uh, just a couple of them, but probably the top one for me is the crime. Yeah. Uh, our office is in the CBD. <clears throat> I every time I walk into the office, we have a jewelry store on the corner, and uh, there's uh, full-time guards outside of that store. That is something I never thought I'd see in New Zealand. Mm. Every time we walk past, there's a guy there uh, guarding that store. Yeah. And uh, they still got robbed, unfortunately, a yeah. couple of weeks ago. So I really feel for those people. I think crime is a big issue in the CBD and in other places, also as an aftermath of the cyclone. Yeah. Another thing is the cost of living. Just, just let's stick with crime for a moment. How would you change it? What, what has been done to get it to this point, and how would you change um, or, or sort of stop, stop crime, the crime wave that's going on? Uh, Act policies uh, proposed to get tougher on criminals and offer real consequences. Yeah. So uh, what we would do, we would increase the prison capacity. Yeah. We would abolish uh, labor's target of reducing prison population. I mean, reduction in prison population in itself is a good target, but this should not be target onto itself. This should be a result of reducing crime, yeah. rather than a priori assumption. Yeah. So ACT would uh, do away with that, yeah. uh, so criminals know that uh, they ha are facing real consequences. Yeah. And also we would reinstate the free strikes law, so okay. the entrenched criminals would know that they will uh, face prison if yeah. they keep reoffending. Yeah. Okay. Now you were mentioning the cost of living crisis as well. What are you hearing and seeing from people out there on how it's affecting them? I mean, when you're a structural engineer, you work with a good cross section of the society. Mm. You work with uh, homeowners, people who are building their first home, people who are renovating the homes they inherited. You work with landlords, and independent on who you're talking to, everybody seems to be struggling. And there's a lot of people who, are, who have their plans on hold, yeah. uh, who have sort of their lives on hold because uh, they worried about day-to-day -day finances, which is why they're not able to plan any, any long-term projects, yeah. things like this. So I think there's a real social impact of the, of the cost of living crisis that we're having. So, so and yeah, Karen, Karen. Yes, yeah, so uh, what, what ACT would do about yeah. it, I mean the, the, the wage price spiral and the inflation is driven by the out of hand government spending, the government spending increased by about 60% uh, in the last couple of years. And the government bureaucracy was, was greatly uh, built up, so uh, ACT would rein that in, would stop the wasteful spending. And the money that can be saved that way, this is all calculated in Act's budget, alternative budget, yeah. 
uh, that could be uh, left with the society through reduced taxes in order for that money to go into productive, uh, productive work so we can increase our efficiency. Yeah, okay. Now, um, you mentioned um, that you live in Estel. Were you affected by Cyclone Gabriel at all? Not personally. Yeah. I consider myself lucky. We yeah. have a small sleep on our lawn, but it's not really anything to speak about. Okay, yeah. And um, what do you think the government and council... Uh, what do you think of the government and council response to the cyclone? Uh, well, I mean, I think we certainly need, need an inquiry. Yeah. On the day I was there, on the, on, literally on the water's edge, yeah. uh, trying to help those people as much as, 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 as we could. Uh, what we've seen, the response was certainly chaotic, but you can't really have a big picture by being in one place. So yeah. ACT thinks that uh, we need an inquiry yeah. into the cyclone and uh, both the immediate response and the aftermath, including the increase in crime yeah. uh, in, the, in, the, in the aftermath. Okay, because you, you, you believe that, um, and you've heard from people that there was lots of crime afterwards, yeah? Ah uh, yes, yeah, yeah, and I mean I was really worried. I was driving through the through the neighborhood, and uh, on on more than one property in Puketapu, you, you you saw the sign "You loot, I shoot," oh, which yeah. is not really something we want in the society. No. I think so. The, uh, it's quite a multifaceted issue, increasing crime. Yeah, uh, because people feel feel vulnerable, and uh, it affects the social cohesion yeah. as well. And do, you, yeah. and do you think the government's done enough in terms of helping property owners and this whole business of um, the different categories and that? Do you think that the communication around that has been smooth? I think uh, there would certainly be improvements that could mm. be done. Uh, I'm sort of at the cold face of that as a structural engineer. Yeah. So I know, I know what's going on. I think that... Uh, there's a lot of hard work that's being done on this, but uh, I don't think the centralized approach is an, is an answer here. So really uh, what we need is more local engagement and more local consultation and better communication with people. I think this is what's, uh, what certainly has room for improvement. And as a structural engineer, what do you have to say about how our infrastructure was and what needs to change to prevent these events happening again? Well, for quite a while now, our infrastructure has been deteriorating. Mm. Uh, this is clear. And uh, part of the reason for that was the uh, wasteful spending and also the priorities that were not necessarily quite there when it came to uh, spending the money from local government and central government. Yeah. So the cyclone only exaggerated the issue that was already there. Yeah. Uh, at the time. Okay. And uh, I think that what we need to do is we need to uh, rework our priorities. Uh, fixing potholes is probably, should be on the top of the, of the spending list. Yeah. Uh, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure if it is at the moment. Yeah. Because um, X got a policy on that because you, you're talking about uh, toll roads and that as a way of improving roads. Yes, that's the latest policy. Yeah. Yeah. Private-public partnership. This is something that has been tried in many places around the world. is known to be to be very successful. Uh, private capital, like a road, a new road, can be treated like a business. Yeah. So, if you have a buy-in for private capital, you should be able to build things quicker and, and cheaper and more efficiently. Yeah. Uh, and yes, when when charge toll for that, I think there would be market in New Zealand yeah. for this sort of thing. So you're noticing quite a few potholes around the area and that as you drive around? Oh, certainly. Yeah. The state of the road has definitely deteriorated. Over the Since the cyclone? Or, or I think it was going on before and yeah. the cyclone has exaggerated the issue, okay. yeah. Yeah. obviously, yeah. both yeah. through straining the services and through the weather. Yeah. But it was there before already. Yeah. Now, obviously, we've been through COVID and that. I don't know if you had COVID at all, but um, yes. um, what what is your view on on vaccines and are you anti them or do you support them? Oh, I'm definitely pro vaccines, oh, good, but yeah. I'm also pro uh, choice. Oh, yeah. So I think that getting vaccinated is a personal choice. Uh, there should be alternatives to that. Oh, yeah. uh, I think it's great that we have this technology that we can use. Yeah. 
and uh, in general vaccines, not only COVID vaccines, they saved multiple lives, but yeah. also I think that choices about uh, personal health and choices about undergoing treatment uh, are personal choices. But what if that affects the wider community? Your uh, personal choice. I think there's ways to protect wider community yeah. while still keeping the choice. For example, uh, many countries uh, had the vaccination or test requirement, yeah. which is a choice. Yeah. So th this is what I'm saying. I don't yeah. think we should ignore the risk, but I think things can be organized in a way where uh, you still leave the personal freedom and the choice. And the protests done in Parliament, what did you make of those last year, the protests against vaccine and vaccine mandates? I just feel for the people. Yeah. I think we should have compassion to the people who are that desperate uh, that they go and they protest uh, things like this. Yeah. And I reckon it's really bad for the, for the cohesion and the uh, social, social unity. I think we have some work to do to re rebuild that unity. Yeah. After that and after many other things that have happened over the last years that affected the social cohesion. So I, I look at it at the human level, yeah. and uh, I think that those people uh, need uh, compassion. We need, we need to do something to reintegrate them into, into the society. I'm not really into finger pointing. Yeah. Do you think the country is more divided than it's been before? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It is uh, the co-governance uh, agenda uh, pushed through by the Labour government is dividing New Zealand society. We need a change on, of direction on that. We need to let people speak what they want to do yeah. uh, with respect to all the issues. And there is complex issues around this subject. Yeah. And I do acknowledge that. Uh, even as a recent foreigner, I'm, I'm well aware of all this yeah. stuff. And the wrongs of the past have to be righted. But this doesn't happen. I don't think it's being helped. Uh, by uh, promoting the division uh, in the society. Yeah, because um, do, you, do you think that, um, I mean, some may say, some may counter you and say some of X policies are contributing to the division. What do you say about that? I don't think any of X policies are contributing uh, to any division. I think Acts policies stand for uh, treating everybody the same, regardless of their ancestry. Yeah. Uh, they stand for universal human rights. They say that every human is born with a set of inherent rights. Yeah. And those rights are not dependent on ancestry. I don't see how this could be uh, possibly uh, dividing. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, obviously, one of the big issues that the government is driving at the moment is climate change. And the Green Party, obviously, as, as part of the government, is, is leading that charge as well. What are your views on, do you believe in climate change? Yes, I think the climate change is real. Yeah. And um, what do you think should be done? And what do you think of what the government is doing at the moment about uh, climate change? Uh, well, I think that maybe first what should be done, what do we think that should be done? Yeah. Uh, I think that the best way to do it, we have to deal with climate change. Climate change is the issue that we have to, we have to tackle. Yeah. Uh, the best tool we have is to, d to deal with those challenges, in my opinion, is the free market. Yeah. And looking historically, the power of the free market has helped us to overcome lots of challenges in the history of yeah. humans. And I firmly believe that it can help us to overcome that as well. Uh, the tool that we have in place at the moment is emission tra trading scheme, yeah. where uh, there's a price of carbon credits. I mean, we're not going to go into the detail of how it works, but essentially ETS is harnessing the forces of yeah. uh, free market to reduce the emissions. Yeah. Uh, all other legislation, the Climate Commission, uh, <clears throat> the uh, legislation around the Climate Commission, uh, we don't think this is necessary. ACT was against that. Uh, we uh, think that uh, this is picking the winners. Uh, so it should be down to the free market to see which way of reducing the emissions is the, is the most efficient. Yeah. So we are against uh, centrally uh, managed uh, yeah. re reduction of emissions. And uh, when it comes to farming, uh, we think that uh, methane emissions should be counted separately 
from uh, carbon emissions yeah. and also uh, <clears throat> the sequestration of carbon on the, on the farms uh, should be uh, balanced out uh, from those emissions. Yeah. And also, last thing but not least, yeah. act things that uh, our emission targets should be tied uh, to emission targets of our trade partners. Uh, so we all do it in unison. If, if you're out of step with, with your trade partners, the policy can be counter counterproductive. Because at the moment, we'll New Zealand. the emissions somewhere else rather than reducing them. Because New Zealand's a bit ahead of other countries at the moment. So. Yes, yeah. yeah. What, what you get is you, you, you actually get increase in emissions as a result of the policy. Yeah. And at the same time as you're getting, uh, as you're destroying our farming industry, for example. Now, just on the act sort of after the party vote and that, so you've got Rob Douglas who's standing in Tuki Tuki. Are you two working together in terms of to try and drive that party vote? Yes, we're working together very closely. We're yeah. talking every day, okay. uh, trying to help each other. Obviously, Rob has more experience. And I think it's great, great that Rob is in a position where he can get uh, to Parliament because that... Uh, that gives people of hopes a potential local representation as well as promotion of act party policies. Because yeah, he's number 16 and the way yes. polls are going, he could, could very well get in. That's yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, what do you bring to ACT's campaign? What do you as a person, what have you got? What is your skill set that you think will um, garner more party votes for the party? Uh, I think I'm a, well, I'm a structural engineer, so I understand the built environment. Yeah. I understand the council regulations. Yeah. So I feel uh, quite strong in this space. I think that act policies of uh, securing funding to the councils for infrastructure through return on GST, I think that's a great idea. Yeah. I think the ideas of independent insurance is a great idea. Like This is something that I work on with every day and I see uh, how the process of uh, consenting new buildings and legislation around building new buildings, how this could be improved to uh, get more houses built, essentially, yeah. how this could be improved to, to promote uh, quicker overturn yeah. on the market. Okay. Now, final question. Um, why should uh, people of Napier vote for ACT? Well, ACT offers real change. Yeah. Over the last couple of years, we've seen a slow decline in the values that I believe New Zealanders hold, hold dear. And we've seen the decline in prosperity. We've seen the cost, cost rise. We've seen the crime increases. Uh, we think that we don't just need the change of government. We need the change of direction. And this is what, what ACT has to offer. Okay. All right, Pavel Mulevsky, thank you for your time today and good luck with the elections. Thank you very much. Thank you.